So in this video, you're going to learn how to create an egg and design it with a variety of tools that you have in Google Drawings. So let's start a new drawing to show you how to make the general shape. And we are going to use a new tool today to help us to get a good shape of the egg. And we are going to use guides. So you can create horizontal and vertical guides by clicking and dragging from the rulers on the top or on the left side. So we are going to use the curve tool and the guides will help us to make a more symmetrical egg. So we're just gonna start here at the top and don't worry about where you click for right now. We're just gonna get a general idea. So we're gonna start by making some kind of angular shape on the left-hand side. So you can see how I went from the top guide to the middle guide, and I'm just kind of making a little bit of an angle. And then as I get towards the bottom, I'm going to bring it in a little bit. And then I can put another mark down here in the middle and the bottom. And then just on the other side, just try to make it as symmetrical as possible. But like I said before, we are going to adjust the shape. Make sure when you're done with your shape that you do go back to the beginning and close it off. If you do not close it off, you will not be able to fill it in. To adjust the shape, you can use the select tool and that's the black arrow in your toolbar. And if you double click on the shape, you'll see all of those little marks that you clicked. And those are called nodes and you can adjust the nodes, but you can also adjust the shape when you are finished in the end. But take your time and get it as perfect as you want because we are going to build up from here. So it's nice to have a nice strong base for our shape. So now I'm going to add a radial gradient to this, and here's how you can make your own color gradient. Um, you can leave the white on the left, but we are going to make a radial gradient, and that center, you can either make it be top left or top right, make it look like the sun is shining on it. Um, and I'm going to change the color on the outside here to purple, and if you wanted to, you could add another um, spot here on your gradient to make it a little bit lighter in the middle and darker on the outside. And if you wanted to do the same thing on the other side, you could make it a little bit lighter by adding a lighter color. Now you can either leave the border on the egg. So if you wanna leave the outline, feel free to, or if you would like to get rid of it, you can change the border color to transparent. And now the fun part. So what's really cool about this is that you can use a variety of lines and shapes that are already here in Google Drawings. Um, and I am going to use the one that I used already just to show you how I did each individual part because they are all different. So up in the top here, I just used the lightning bolt shape. And so you can find a whole bunch of shapes up here in the top. So there's the lightning bolt, and I just reversed it to make one on the other side. And the one in the middle, I actually used the polyline tool to create my own shape. So it is kind of important when you're making some small details to zoom in. Um, and what I did was I just made the shape in between the lightning bolts there just to make it look a little more creative. And then I used the select tool to go back and adjust the shape. Now here I did make a curved line, but I used a shape for this and transformed it. So I actually used the block arc shape. So when I add it, here's what it looks like. And if you notice, there's like a little yellow dot right there, and that does allow you to transform the shape into something a little bit different. So if I just click and drag that, you can notice that I have made it a little bit on the curved side. So here as I flip it, I can uh, stretch it and make it a little bit different. I like the curved lines because it does give the round object a little bit of depth to make it look like it's more 3D than flat. 
Now, this is really interesting with the dotted lines. Um, instead of adding a whole bunch of white circles, all you do is just add a line. So this is already going to add the polka dots here. But in the uh, border color, you can change that. And you have the border weight I have at 12 pixels, but you can make it tiny. This is one pixel. And then in the border dash, that's where you can add the dotted lines, or if you wanted to make a dash or something else completely different. But the more things that you play around here, the more options you actually have. There's a lot of combinations of things that you can do. And it looks like there's a little optical illusion here. It looks like the line is curving in the opposite direction because of my other lines. So here I have a, a little line off here to the side. And what I can do with that is I can actually um, move that and uh, duplicate it. So if I just put it here in the middle and to duplicate is control D. And I'll move it on the other side here. Now, if I wanna repeat these two things, I can hold shift and click. Now that they're both selected, I can duplicate and kind of move those around. So you can play around with making this into a pattern and uh, moving them individually just by clicking off of it. And I'm gonna delete this last one here. So down here, what I did was I added some triangles and added a gradient with no border. I made the border transparent. And down here, what I did was I used a polyline tool and I'll do it off to the side so that you can see but you are only going to um, make a click every time you want it to uh, turn, or in this case, zigzag. So I'm doing this really quick, but keep in mind because it's the polyline or um, with the curve tool, you can go back and edit as long as you've made it a complete shape. So you can make a gradient in this, you could take out the border if you wanted, but you can also duplicate these if you wanted to make a pattern. So feel free to use the polyline tool however you want. Now this little dotted line down here on the bottom, all I did was use the polyline tool and I changed the border dash. So very similar to just using the line tool, what we did on the top. Now, if you look in the bottom, what I did was I actually used the scribble tool and this is my name here, but if you wanted to, you could write happy Easter or something else. Um, but the scribble tool cannot be adjusted like it can with the polyline and the curve tool. So again, you can um, put it off to the side before you add it to your Easter egg. And what I did was I actually used an external mouse. And it's a little bit easier to use an external mouse rather than a trackpad, but it'll take you a little bit of getting used to. So I'm just going to write hello off to the side. And you can still make some adjustments. So you can change the border color, the weight, and the style. Uh, you can also change the ends if you wanted to do that too. You have that option. There's a couple more things I wanna go over. And uh, one of them is the drop shadow and two is the background. So let's go ahead um, over the drop shadow first. And the first thing that you're going to do with that is you are going to duplicate the egg. So just click on the egg shape, hit control D and just make it a little bit smaller. So just squish it all the way down. And you can make that go to the back by hitting Control, Shift, and the down arrow. And the gradient's gonna be a little bit different than coloring the egg, but here's a quick example of how to color your drop shadow to make it look like it blends into the background. Um, so I have my gradient already made here, but I'll show you uh, what I did. So it is a center gradient and it's a radial and on the left hand side should be black. And then on the right hand side, what you're going to do is make it transparent. And um, you'll see the colors blend together if you do have a background, but if you don't, you won't see it right away. Um, if you wanna add another dot for another transparent um, part in your shape here to make it a little more transparent, feel free to do that and you can come back and play with it as much as you want to. 
Now for the background, uh, what we're going to do is a nice gradient of the sky and the ground. And you can choose any colors that you want to. But for our purposes, we're going to make it blue and green and kind of make it blur a little bit in the middle. So if you right click and select background, we're going to make a custom gradient again. And you can see that the colors are pretty close to each other. So you can add a couple of dots here of color. Um, and if you put them closer together, you'll get a nice straight line. But if they're further apart, then you're going to have a nice blur. But I like them further apart just to direct more attention to the egg in the front rather than the background. So good luck with this and hope you come up with something unique.